Hello and welcome to Just Do It, a Dewey Brothers podcast. This is episode 11, the 1-1 one, one of season 3. Eric, how are you doing this week? You know, I'm hanging in there. It's it's getting chilly, so I'm, I'm feeling happy, man. It's very chilly. Luckily, we got out of there from wherever we were last week uh, when the MACC showed up, and now we are uh, at another undisclosed location. This time, somewhere deep in the um, Rocky Mountains, uh, evicting detection. We are way deep in there. And like I said, it's even chillier here. That's right. They got snow on the hills. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's snow here year-round. Uh, well, no, but... <laughs> well, there should Depends be. Depends on the year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, global warming is going to say no to that one. Oh, yeah, big no from global warming. But there's snow right now, as a matter of fact, just over there, Eric, at, what is that? I, th I think I can see it with the binoculars. Is that Loveland Ski Area? The, the, um, I think they're hosting like the first annual uphill-downhill race. That is, in fact, correct. We have great competitors such as Elron Majan, uh, Jefferson Steelflex. Ooh, Jefferson Axel. Steelflex is very good. Axel, uh, Axel, he's. I'm looking at Axel, Axel this year. He's gonna be good. And then, uh, uh Vaughn. I, I think he's Vaughn, all right. Uh, Vaughn Sausage Wiener. <laughs> Ooh, Vaughn Sausage Wiener. He is, uh, I think, Austrian, isn't he? He's come all the way across the pond. To, I believe uh, he has, he and. I, I I got a lot of hope for you know Von Sausage Wiener here. He he's been really impressing me with his uh, YouTube tutorials, and I mm -hmm. think he's gonna step it up on the course today. I really think so. He he has some thunderous uh, uh thunderous thighs, and I think they're gonna propel him straight up the mountain for the uphill section. His which nickname we all know is the most important. His nickname is Thunder Thigh Man. So I. I think it's only natural that he's gonna he's one to watch for sure, but you can't can't count out Jefferson Steel Flex and the others. Uh exactly. And I mean I'm keeping my eye out for Jimothy Jimmy Johns, who is also uh, I mean that guy's he's lightning quick. What's crazy about Jimothy Jimmy Johns is that this year his younger brother Timothy Timmy Tons is actually <laughs> Yo, Timmy also Tons playing. Is here, dude. I didn't know he was old enough to compete. Yeah, Timothy Timmy Tons is mm -hmm. also in the uh, in the running this year. So I, it's good to see what those two relatives, even though they don't share the same last name, different, same mother, different father, very yeah. complicated. But it's going to be exciting to see what they bring to the table. Yeah, it turns out they're actually both raised in the mountains of Switzerland, um, which is really just astounding. The only thing better than their uh, uphill skiing is their yodeling. So. Uh, that and their mother's fondue stew, Eric. It oh is my gosh, delicious! Yeah, no, that that fondue stew is something to be, yeah, something to be Maybe, desired. I, I think this the, the all the fondue that they eat really is what uh, powers those athletes. Um, what did you have today for dinner? I had tuna fish noodles. It was delicious. I put all Ooh. the macaroni right into my my squats, right into my squat muscles. That's good. That's what you need to do. Last night, I had my tuna fish and noodles, but this night, I busted mm -hmm. out the tortellinis. Ooh, I heard from our previous podcast and also one of our commenters that uh, the, the best workout plan involves putting the pasta in the legs. That's true. The pasta, just mm -hmm. inject it straight to the legs, and that's how you get big and strong. It's I all mean, all, all, the competitors, all the competitors out here today are definitely – taking a little pasta pasta injections yeah i'm gonna go interview um von sausage wiener right now hey von sausage wiener how much pasta have you eaten well yeah i take a lot a lot of pasta a lot of pasta and i i grind it up very nice and fine i grind it i centrifuge it i i extract what makes it pure what makes it good what makes it strong so what I do is I take that strong pasta after I centrifuge it, and I, I just I gum it. I, I put it in my gums and I, I let the starch gods look down upon me with their great wise powers, and that is how my thighs are. That's right, two feet wide. I I know you can't see this because you don't have the the video graphing, but they are two feet wide on both sides. Yeah, it's and not it's, that. Your thighs are not safe for television, but fortunately, this is a podcast. That is why 
I know everyone out here is scared of the old Von Sausage Wiener, but I know I can take them down, and I am a big, strong, starch-infused good. So, besides starch-fueled power, do you have any, uh, besides super starch science fueling your legs, do you have any other techniques or uh, hints or tricks about uh, the race that you're going to employ? So, the, the trick Some sort is... of starchy strategy, maybe? A lot of a lot of people uh, they they think wax put wax on your ski, but no, it's not good for the uphill up the uphill challenge. What I do is coat my skis in one hundred percent pasta starch, and the pasta starches it's a good fibrous, powerful creation, and it it brings the skis to life. I say the the skis have have life, and the skis they they go down the hill fast and up the hill faster. Well, next time I'm out on the slope, I'm going to have to try waxing my blades with pasta starch. That sounds like a great idea. Thank you so much, uh, Von Sausage Wiener, and best of luck out there during the race. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Dewey, brother. I, I also I have, to, I have to let you know, I, normally I wouldn't divulge my, my secrets, but I, I know with my big thunder thighs that mm-hmm. I, I cannot be beat today. All right. Thank you so much, and good luck out there. I bet you're going to take the first prize for sure. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. Wow, Alex, that guy sounds like a really, really cool dude. I'm glad you got to do, uh, do a little quick interview with him. He really does. I'm glad he was like up for it. Um, I mean, his thighs are massive, so we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll check back in later in the podcast to see how the athletes are, are going. That, um, that would be great. Great idea. Oh, you know what that starting pistol means, Eric? I think it means we have to hop right into the, I mean, the it skiers means are already the going down. Topic. Oh, they're going up the hill. Oh, they're going um, up. They start going up. Then they, they start go going up. So they're on their way up. Um, and we got to hop into the this main topic. Absolutely. Um, the, our main topic this week, Eric, concerns a very special group of peoples. Hmm. A special group of peoples. Mm-hmm. So I, I have to assume that these people were once uh, deemed gods by by the aliens that first Doubtful. came to america right uh i mean there's forty four thousand of them so sure hmm so they weren't deemed by gods by ancient aliens uh maybe by ancient aliens but these people are uh they belong they are part of the old world so they're in europe okay okay europe uh as of 2012 there were 44,000 of them, but in 2009, there was 52,000, so that is... Ooh, jumping their numbers up. Well, going down. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Um, so I'm not sure how that's working out, but... Yeah. What, what are these people's uh, main diet? Does it consist a lot of pasta? Uh, well, being from Portugal, uh, probably a decent amount of pasta, but not as much paella. Oh, so they they love the paella. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, you know those uh, Portuguese. The Portuguese if they can add are seafood and rice to it. They're gonna. They will do anything they can. I mean, that's it's Portugal. What else do they have out there? I mean, earthquakes. <laughs> that is very true. It's really probably from all the fracking. Uh, I don't know how much fracking gets done in Portugal, but but I I'm gonna blame know. it on the fracking. Oh, I would blame it on the fracking. I do know that uh, Lisbon burned down due to earthquakes. So, that potato fractado, you know. That sounds about right. Um, I mean, it's nice that we're out here in Colorado where there there isn't any coal to frack. There's never been or, uh, oil to frack. Yeah. I mean, otherwise Frank would have sold this mountain too. I think he sold the mountain we were on previously, which is a tragedy. Which is I. I mean, a good thing that this mountain that we're on currently is protected by the uh, government. Although I have heard that the government is recently looking to sell out their mountains to investors that want to frack them. Oh, man. Well, I hope that uh, A, Frank doesn't have the capital, and B, that doesn't go through because we need all the mountains. They're beautiful. So uh, Portugal, Portugal. Yeah. Yeah, people in Portugal. This group of people in Portugal, yeah. They love paella. So are these purple people from Portugal, paella-eating people, are they... What other P word describes them? Um, I would say proletariat, because these are Ukrainians in Portugal. That's right. Our main topic, Eric, is the second largest foreign community of Ukrainians, um, Portugal. Is number one the U.S.? 
uh, I have no idea what the largest foreign community, uh, probably Spaniards. It's probably in Sp- in Portugal. It's probably Spaniards. Oh, oh, oh. So Ukrainians. it's the second the second largest group. Oh, I'm just kidding. Only the only immigrant community that's larger is Brazilians. In Portugal. Yep. That's well, they do speak the same language. That makes sense. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. So it's the large. It's the second largest group of non of foreigners, of foreigners in, in Portugal. Portugal. Okay, okay. So it's the Ukraine. That's yeah. that's kind of wild considering they're pretty far the apart. That the Spaniards and the rest of Europe aren't foreigners because they're all in the EU. Oh, but, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Who knows? <laughs> Not me. Not all I, I know is in the late 1990s there was a lot of Ukrainians in Portugal, and that's our main topic today. Huh? Yep. Do you know what Motivated else? by job search, and they were probably dominantly masculine. Yeah. Do you know what else is uh, a lot in Portugal? Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, what other large groups of uh, gatherings occur in Portugal? Uh, I don't know. Do you know? Well, I mean, first you have Ukrainian. Mm-hmm. There, there's a big the Ukrainian block party where they all roll through with their uh, track suits. It's yeah. it's a sight to see every year. And then um, also, I do believe that they have the annual Man of War uh, celebration month because that's Ooh, where. Course. That's where Portugal celebrates having a massive jellyfish named after him. Absolutely. I forgot about the Man of War celebrations. Uh, I believe at some point, uh, well, the holiday season's coming up too. So they're going to do that thing where they have a log and they put presents in it and they beat him with a stick until the presents come out. Oh, it's like a piñata, but much more Portuguese. Uh, Yeah, and it's like Southern Spanish, yeah. That's pretty neat. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, man. I don't really care about the Portuguese. Sorry, Portuguese. Uh, but are you, know you telling I, me that we have to check back in with the race right now? Do you know what I really do care about is the uphill downhill. Let's let's. Dude, Jefferson let's... Steel Flax has taken a, a strong lead out over the rest of the field. Oh my he's gosh, he's at least thirty seconds ahead. But I, I would uh, say thirty seconds. Yeah, he's a good like hundred feet or so vertical. Mm-hmm. And ahead then of the rest of the party. Followed oh. right behind by Von so- Sausage Wiener, and then Tim uh, trailing behind them are uh, Timothy Tim- and Jimothy. Timothy and Jimothy are going yeah. wild. They are neck and neck. I knew they mm-hmm. would be. Neither of them wants to uh, wants to lose son of the year, that's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see how uh, the top four are shaping up. They're probably about, what, I'd say a third of the way up the mountain. They're negotiating the very tricky uh, baby, baby spruces. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it looks like Axel Axel is actually out with a uh, with some sort of injury. It, it appears his ski seems to have uh, his binding broke on the uh, ascent. Oh man, well, maybe it's totally legal for him to repair it. So we'll see if either his team dog sled can get up to him, or that's, if that's good. Uh, he'll he'll be able to repair it himself. The right, the, right. the neutral service dog sled is right behind that lead pack of guys. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll see so if it's stopped for him. Let's see what we have. Uh... It would appear the neutral service dog sled has stopped to help Axel Axel, but they don't have his specific uh, ski type, so they're doing a hot swap of the binding. So wow, that look, is... he's back up and going again. Oh my gosh! It's, but it's, it's it, that binding doesn't quite fit, unfortunately. So he may have to wait until his own dog sled further up the mountain can catch up to him. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. It looks like the race now is is pretty steady. Nothing too crazy happening. Let's mm-hmm. go to a commercial break where I believe we have a sponsorship song coming at us. So, Eric, what is the what's the actual sponsor for this uh, song coming up here? So it it is the the sponsor of this race and this podcast, uh, mm-hmm. Longo e Forte Pasta Company. Ooh, I love me a good uh, Lungo e Forte. Lungo. Forte. Ooh. When you're out in the world and you have a little pasta, it's time to remember that it's all a rasta. Lungo e Forte. The best looking pasta in all the land. Nothing is as strong, tall, or handsome. When you want to get nice and strong, Lungo e Forte. When you want to get pretty long, 
Lungo e Forte. It's the best Italian pasta in the game, and that's what we're gonna do to stay the same. Taking my homies out to the club. Going down in what's the rub? Everybody's eating the best pasta around. Lungo e Forte. Oh, it's the best. Number one pasta in all of the land. Everyone knows it's the best selling brand. I'm out here eating my pasta. Lungo e Forte. It's a choice day. Ooh. Ah, Lungo e Forte. We got the best pasta. It's so strong. Full of fiber and cellulose. Oh, yeah, boys. Who knows what's next? It's Lungo e Forte. The best pasta verse. They were able to create the arc, the Triomphe de Arc. With all of this wonderful starch, I'm out here telling you all today. Everyone knows it's Lungo e Forte. Mmm, Lungo e Forte. Oh, that's right, it's the best pasta around. Got nothing up here、uh, but sand abound. We're eating all the pasta at the top of the mountain and skiing back down as fast as you can count. Wow, that was. Forte. Lungo e Forte. Wow, that was a great commercial break. I gotta Ooh, say, really was, dude. the uphill downhill is the perfect sponsor for Lungo e Forte pasta. And for those of you who are listening to this podcast and can't see what Eric and I are seeing right now,、um, that was all just immaculately tanned Italian men skiing completely nude in downhill skis. And it was. It was, was, it was complete nudity. And yeah. I I will say it. They were showing everything. It I, was wild. Add attention. Let me tell you that, it, dude. It, I hope pasta does that to me. Italian. <laughs> I mean,、it's、I think Lugo e Forte. I think Lugo e Forte is the only one that can do it. And <laughs> I think so. It's all that. It's Italian, all that protein in there. I gotta say, Italian advertising is something else these it, days. It I mean, it really is. I didn't even know, Eric. I didn't even know you could be. That stiff in a pair of skis、um, while it was this cold out.、I、Not mean, gonna lie, I mean, I don't know where they found these actors, but they are some actors and actresses. This、yeah. everyone needs Lungo e Forte, but they were the、Absolutely. most chiseled Adonises I have ever seen in the cold. And from what I, I, I would say, see, Roman gods. Roman, I, I they looked like Michelangelo. I think they really I think, did. Did you see that one clip where it had?、Uh, Michelangelo actually chiseling out that one man's abs. It was insane. Oh, it was it was beautiful. So、uh, anyway, was, we just wanted to let you know what was、oh, happening. That was、um, that was crazy. We、that、are gonna check. Definitely raise the temperature in this、uh, in on this glacier out here. Oh, it really did.、Uh, we're not on a glacier, but、uh, we're in Loveland Pass. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we're at Loveland Ski Resort.、Um, waiting for these guys to get up. This, you know, the rest of these racers to get up here. Um, they're getting close to the top, though. They're doing really well. Looks like Von Sausage Wiener has taken the lead. He's just made a pass uh, uh, to, to overtake Jefferson Steelflex, and、oh, right on his heel in his slipstream is Timothy and Jimothy. They, this is going to be. I knew like they all had really good starts, and I think that they're going to take the competition. Yeah, it looks like Steelflex is going on the breakaway. We will see if it holds to the top of the mountain, which is coming right up. And for everyone's favorite, Axel Axel has been able to rejoin the race. It is able is, to rejoin this this front pack. Yeah, he's he's catching up. He's he's、mm-hmm. he's trailing, but he is a second half skier for sure. Oh, absolutely. He's a downhill more a downhiller. than a yes, more than an uphiller for sure. So、All、with、right. that, we'll take some questions from the internet here because that's what the people want, Eric.、Mm-hmm. What uh, do you have any questions out there、uh, from, from the of broadcast?、Uh, absolutely. First of all. We have、uh, alleys. Votes are certified at Social Alley. Says anyone see plants on TV shows and think there's literally no way that plant will survive there? It gets virtually no light. What is that? An east-facing window? Shake my head. Well, what she doesn't realize is east-facing is actually really beneficial to plants because everyone knows sun rises in the east. The morning sun、mm-hmm. is. Stronger than the setting sun. I didn't know that actually. I'm not much of a botanist. I kill all of my plants by putting them in the north-facing window、mm. and leaving it open in the winter. 
Okay, that yeah, cold's that'll good. do it. I mean, the cold the cold isn't good, but it really toughens them up, you know. I think yeah. the problem with you is all of your plants just aren't weak. They don't have the strong blood that mm -hmm. a good good northern plant should have. So I should be I should be injecting them with antifreeze. Um, no, 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 because that's not good. You need to <laughs> you need to be injecting them with 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 blood. That's what I'm saying. Okay. A good okay. strong northern blood, just um, right into the right into the little stomata, and that's how you Viking know it's approved. Good. Viking approved. Viking mm -hmm. testing. Viking approved. All right, sounds um, good. I was gonna say though. So everyone knows that the sun is hotter on the west coast, but that's only uh -huh. because, right? No, like, this is a fact. Like east right. coast of the U.S. versus the west coast, the sun is hotter. Sun's in the hotter west. on the west coast. That's why you get sunburns and stuff out there, but not so much mm -hmm. on the East Coast. And so a lot of people think, oh, so that means the when the sun sets in the West, it's it's, it's hotter, hotter, right? Hotter, yeah. No, no, that's that's actually false. It's I didn't know it's that. hotter. It's hotter on the West Coast. The only reason is because you get more of the eastern sun hitting it. Oh, that exactly works with the angles. Yeah. Um, so yeah, actually, sorry, social alley. Um, I've never seen a plant on a TV show and thought there's no way that plant will survive there. Um, I have not uh, because I have seen plants in real life and I think, how do they survive there? And I know it's because they've been <laughs> injected with Viking blood. It's because they've been injected with Viking blood, which is the, you know, the standard way to keep any house plant alive, really. Long live the Nords. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, are there any other questions from the yeah, question JV's gallery one more one more question from the question gallery jv's at hexen panda asks the hard drive on our ps4 is making rattling noises and isn't being detected by the system is that good well depends on what you need by good that, that that's that's fair so if you have an addiction to video games this <laughs> is great it's gonna it's gonna cut you off cold turkey <laughs> Um, oh well, I was thinking it was actually it's really good because now you no longer have a PlayStation Four. What you and have you buy a, a PlayStation musical 5. instrument? Ooh, that's I've heard musical instruments yeah. are very good for your mental health and mm -hmm. actually increase your intelligence if you play one. So if you always have a musical instrument going in your house, you're going to become the next like Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking with a with a rattling hard drive PS Four. I, I know this little this little no name pasta company that's only the biggest pasta in all uh, winter athletics. Pasta Let's just Forte say is looking the, for another hot commercial. Mm -hmm, it's the longest and strongest, and mm -hmm. I they are very into experimental sounds because they are an experimental pasta company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, Lungi Forte is. I mean, they probably you could make a make a use the new sound to make a new commercial for them and maybe you'll even be there on the shoot day which i mean is pretty awesome i mean it's it'd be a miracle to join yeah. with them i will say on the uh, on the topic of video game addictions mm -hmm. if um if this is what sort of has to end your video game addiction please don't get sucked into the uh, the cheaper forms where uh you're sitting on your phone and you start playing those those freemium games those are those are dangerous is League of Legends a freemium game? Because I have spent one thousand dollars on it. Oh my goodness! That's because well, it's so free. That's how I know it's free. Yeah, that's my favorite part about League is how free it is. And right, I I think I've spent six billion dollars on it <laughs> on League of Legends, the most free of all the free games. I mean, Oops. like you can't help it, but. It's just oh, so dude, free. Don't worry, it's... I'm buying the new Hextech LeBlanc skin already, Eric, on pre-order. <laughs> it's just, it's so free that it, it really mm -hmm. hurts your wallet because it's that free. <laughs> it really free. does, it goes right from the wallet. Like, how could I play the game without, you know, having an animation that makes, uh, that puts basically visual vomit all over my opponent's screens? I live for visual vomit. It's really the cascading money symbols uh, that every time I kill someone with uh, gemstone LeBlanc, that well, really is why I'm buying this skin. That's good. See, I actually bought the uh, the special effect that just every time you get a kill, it screams, here comes the money! <laughs> money, 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 money. Oh, yeah, I love how there's no way to turn it down either. So you're like trying to play without like your parents catching on, you know? And then the, the your opponents, they'll disconnect because their mom will hear them late at night. 
when the here comes the money, 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 oh, yeah. blasting out of their speakers. And mom it, is like, hey, I'm turning off the internet. Yeah, it oh, actually man. overrides speakers and just blasts it 100 volume. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you can't turn it down. Even unplugging yeah. the speakers doesn't work. It's it's a great feature, and I'm glad <laughs> I paid for I I'm glad I paid $300 for it. Yeah, it's really worth it. It's really worth it, for sure. Gives you that edge. Um, well, Eric, let's check back in with the race. They, it looks like they are cresting the top, and Jefferson Steel Flex has been reeled back in by the pack. But he, Von, yes. or, Von, no, Von Sausage Von Von has successfully made a break. He, it's going to be tough going, breaking the wind like that all it's, by yourself. It's tough but. because I, I know sauce, uh, Von Sausage Wiener, and he is a, he's a very strong uphiller, but his downhill leaves a little to, uh, to be desired, at and least last year. The, the, exactly. The, that's what lost it for him last year. And he but just I got think, through the downhill hut. So as the other competitors are making the turn at the top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. I, I have heard that he's been re- practicing and going, he's really been focused on the downhill portion of his uh, career and his, you know, his race this year. So it's, let's, let's see what he has to offer. But when I asked him how he was going to navigate um, Daredevil's Rock, he said he was going to shoot it. So I don't speak oh German, my but I, shoot, I assume that means he's making many turns and taking very little risk. He is, that's, it's a bold strategy because yeah. he, he has to know that Axel Axel is one of the best at just full, full sending. So for sure it's, so we're, we'll see if that shoe strategy pays off. Yeah. And then, I mean, Timothy and Jimothy are, they, they're not to slack off either. They, they, oh, they they're young it. and they are fast. They're young, so. fast, a little conservative, but it's, I, I think that they, they don't count them out yet. Mm-hmm. All right, Alex. Um, where where are we off to now? Uh, well, we're out of questions, so I think we got to do a little nature walk, and uh, it'd only be appropriate, I think, for you to talk about the sort of winter nature that uh, our listeners may be anticipating. Okay, so it is winter. Oh, with the time. drop in temperature, yeah, it is winter time. It's getting cold. The only mm-hmm. thing that can survive in the cold, cold blooded things <laughs> like snow frogs, <laughs> just like snow frogs. Yeah, the they're coming out. The cold-blooded snow mm-hmm. frog is something that is, it's actually, it's not native. It's an invasive species. Is it really? over. Well, it I, is. Know, I know that the hot tub crab is also an invasive species. The hot tub crab is related to the snow frog, actually. Despite its name, they are both part of the, <laughs> uh, the, um, <laughs> the flatulenti uh, oh. genus of animal. Of course, of course. And um, they they're very distinct. That no other animal really recreates the sound mm-hmm. that this uh, this family does, which is the um, um, it comes in all different shapes and sizes, yeah. of course. But normally, you can get a unless their mating call. You hear them on or a, chairlifts at ski resorts. They mm-hmm. they love to stick around chairlifts at ski resorts, um, particularly gondolas and doubles. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, very infrequently, if you're on a um, chairlift with a stranger, will they come out? Um, they really like to pair up with family members and close mm-hmm. friends. Yeah, they, especially if you know everyone in your gondola. The that is where they are most often heard. Uh, they're also known for in gondolas to actually also secrete a pheromone that mm-hmm. that has a strong pungent smell. Um, as well as their mating call to attract potential mates. Mm-hmm. That, that's true. It It is an elusive creature that n- no one has ever seen or documented. However, there is much in-depth research into the sounds and pheromones that they release. And hopefully one day we can we can study one and see what it actually looks like. But similar to hot tub crabs. Well, Eric, they, have um, you they released done, well, a lot I think of we air. need to talk about another specific thing that plagues the gondola, which is the Mary Jane fly, which is another cold blooded um, creature. So the Mary really, Jane fly is uh, yeah. much more, I mean, in, in contrast to the uh, snow frog and hot tub. It's crab, very specialized. Uh, these, despite being invasive species, they don't really pose too much of a threat as they have no natural mm-hmm. natural predator, but they also don't seem to feed on anything. They just actually 
they're similar to clams where they're filter feeders mm -hmm. and they actually filter feed the air. So they take in everything around them. They do and make the air considerably more uh, pungent, though. Pungent. Uh, it, that is true. You can However, find them in two main locations, the gondola and also kind of like off the trail in the woods a little ways. Yes, it's that's mm -hmm. true. However, I mean, um, sometimes, sometimes rarely uh, in the parking lot. Yes. Uh, occasionally at a at a good tailgate, they yep. they will be out and about. Um, all the greatest scientists of our generation have come together and have agreed, despite them releasing certain chemicals into the air, that it's at such a negligible amount that it's it's fine, and yeah. they um it it poses no threat to the environment. However, that's that's different from the Mary Jane fly, which is also a cold blooded in uh cold-blooded creature that mm -hmm. loves to live on mountains and in uh, areas um, with with college kids and hippies. Yeah, well, they're hippies. native to college kids. Uh, they're native to colleges, but they have – and the west coast of California. Yes, that's also – area but, in particular, but they uh, – Even in have, Colorado, there there's ooh, a lot they, of uh, – So they migrated inside. to the mountains, and they found a very strong hold in – specifically, you're right, Colorado. There's a very it's large true. number of them there. A lot of populations of Mary Jane flies for sure. It, it's interesting because they uh, they leave a very strong smell that that sticks around. Whereas you know, the the fun loving snow frogs are are quick mm -hmm. fleeting in the cold cold winter winds. That's true. What about the hot tub crabs, Eric? You were just on those. They come out this time of year and are really truly a menace to all backyard jacuzzis. It, that is that is factual, actual, and that is because the hot tub crab, um, much easier to detect than the snow frog because they uh, they like to sit at the bottom of the depths of the jacuzzi system and release bubbles mm -hmm. uh, out from the out from the depths whenever they you know release their call, and these bubbles vary in sizes due to the size of the hot tub crab and they also have strong pinchers don't they you have to watch out for oh my gosh don't even for, get me started they scuttle away pinchers. underneath the the guise of the bubbles in the hot tub right that's they uh that's their defense mechanism is the mm -hmm. bubbles and they they really do like pinching down there you gotta watch out so that's why you change your water it's not to clean the water it's actually to get rid of any infestation of hot tub crabs Ah, okay, that makes sense. Well, you want to get back to you want to wrap this podcast up by getting back to the action out on the mountain. Oh yeah, I'm looking through my binoculars and oh my gosh, I don't I don't know how he did it, but it looks like none other than Twinkleberg von Iceberg is actually he he he's closing in. Twinkleberg is closing in, but I, I don't think it's going to be enough, Eric. Although he, oh, they, they have the, they have the he, Skull Rock coming up, and oh my God, Von Sausage Wiener has just hucked the Skull Rock. Oh he my, just went straight over that thing. No, no fear, he must be flying full out, sixty, almost seventy oh, miles an hour with steel flex and a full tuck coming no down through the thin trees. No one has ever done that before. On the left side is Timothy and Jimothy. They're gaining. They're, they're gaining up. quick. Oh no, Alex! Alex Von so Sausage Wiener's a little too bad into the wind. Timothy but they're and coming Jimmy, into they're the... rubbing. They're, they're rubbing together. Oh my gosh, they're down. Timothy oh my goodness. Oh my god, there's been a wreck. Timothy and Jimothy oh. are in the trees. Oh god, they're cup oh. they're they're cup the they're stuck in the netting. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, they're coming down through the last bend here, up over the last knoll. It's a straight and, shot down and... to the finish line, down the ice wall, and oh my god, oh. he's done it. He did it. I I I couldn't I didn't imagine this day, but it appears that Van Sausage Wiener is this year's victor of the Van Sausage downhill. Wiener has come back on the downhill and pulled it in for a win. We need to go to the camera to double check, but it looks like he's got it by at least one sausage lane. <laughs> it looks like he has it by roughly one sausage lane. He, <laughs> he really whipped it out at the end. Oh, he, it was it was all in the lean right at the line, the just lean. ahead of Steel Flex last year's winner. Um, who oh, I mean, I gotta like, say, Eric, he slayed it down through the mini trees there. He, dude, the mini, the mini the line trees. he took was good, but not quite as daring as Jefferson Steelflex. Um, Huck Skull, of Skull, Skull Rock. Rock was a impressive feat, but I gotta, I gotta say, the most impressive thing I saw was the way that Steelflex handled. He was behind, 
but the mm-hmm. way he handled camel chicane was was artful. It was beautiful. I've never seen both, such great. I have, I have never seen anyone hug both the humps and the utter side of camel chicane so well. He he really did that well. But I gotta say, wow, Skull Rock. Let's just say sausage wiener really knows how to how to handle himself he really does it looks like we're going to the awards ceremony now they've called it for sausage wiener after video review wow so mr sausage wiener now that you are hosting the lungy forte cup of pasta high above your head how does it feel to be this year's winner of the uphill battle oh my goodness that was oh oh great great uh great great sausages that this one this one's for my mother my mother and my father, the, the great sausage wieners. Mm-hmm. And I, of course, I'm, so, I'm so grateful to be holding the, the, the wonderful, the wonderful, the wonderful long, long, long in forte. It's, it means so much to me. I, I last so year, I, when I knew, you were behind coming down to Skull Rock and you decided to just huck it instead of uh, hanging left, like, Jefferson right. Steel Flex. What were you yeah. thinking? What was going through your head, Von Sausage? I knew, I knew, I had to make my move, and I know as a as a big, strong sausage wiener that mm-hmm. sometimes you gotta you gotta put it out on display. You have to rip down your pants and say, "I am the Lord. I am the King of the Castle." Mm-hmm. So I, I I I knew what I had to do. I had to to take Skull Rock, and I had to make it mine. So that's what I did. I said, I would make you mine, and I made it mine. And how did you know there would be enough snow on the landing? Because last year, Tina Les, uh, Les Forte, she nearly she broke both her legs landing and all, both of her skis landing below Skull Rock there. How did you know you well, either have the clearance over those jagged protrusions or uh, there was enough snow this year filling in Loveland Pass? I I... I did not know. I did not scope it out. I, oh my I left goodness. it. I left it up to the greater creator, King Lung in Fruiten, the the king of pasta. I I knew. Long I knew. I had the starch. Obviously. Yeah. Lung in Forte. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had the starch running through my veins. That is the starch of the winners. And I knew. All right, well, with that much we'll starch you... in me, I I could conquer the world. All right, well, we'll let you get back to celebrating, uh, Von Sausage Wiener. Make sure that you hold up that cup high and, uh, you know, only cook the pasta, cook the whole trophy for 20 minutes in the microwave um, for best results. Back to you, Eric. Wow, that that sounds like a wonderful time down there. Um, it is. We're having a, a party. party. Here. Everyone, and the party, the party is blasting. I can hear it like 20 miles away. It's still going. It's bumping. It's I. You know, and it's really great to see Jefferson Steelflex still having holding his head high because he he had a great. Steelflex has been so good for so long. He really defines the uphill downhill. And, as a sport. and Axel, Axel, I mean, he was third place. Really, did, I, I'm hoping that Timothy and Timothy. It looks like they're both okay. Um, they got they managed to get untangle themselves from the nets and get back into the field, and they only lost a couple places. Mm-hmm. So it's it's quite impressive, and I gotta say, I mean, nothing, not everyone the whole the whole race it was a beautiful race and i'm looking forward to it next year um, oh and our first uh i was gonna say in sixth place eric was our top female finisher who i mean uh, amazing um uh lindenberry uh hans daughter was very i mean lindenberry hans daughter is a fantastic uphill downhiller first of all um and the she, fact that she, was she really reminds me of her father she, sixth place. she really reminds me of her father charles uh Charles Hans, Linden, Lindenberg, <laughs> Hans' daughter. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Charles Lindenberg, uh, Hans' daughter. Yeah, another so, famous Swedish uphill downhiller for sure. There, there. Like he, he revolutionized. The it, sport it, it must be in the first. family. Yeah, oh, well, he was the first yeah. one who decided to go uphill and then downhill. Up until then, everyone had been doing downhill uphills. Yeah, which yeah. totally different sport. Oh, so completely he revolutionized takes the all the tension out. Made it definitely a lot more exciting. Mm-hmm. And um, I got to say, it's been coming to you live from the 2020 Uphill Downhill in Loveland Past. Sorry, yeah. MACC, please do not watch this recording. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank all of our wonderful sponsors of the program today, including the biggest sponsor and the, the strongest, Lungo y Forte. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, I got to thank Snow Frogs for being an elusive uh, beast out on the invading our ski resorts this winter. And the after competition beverage sponsored by Homegrown Hops. That's mm-hmm. right. Every every beverage consumed tonight was actually produced by Homegrown Hops. Um, Got to thank all the athletes, uh, Jefferson Steelflex, Von Sausage Wiener, Timothy and Jimothy, um, Axel, Axel, and of course, Lingenberry, Von Hahn's daughter. Very, very wonderful crowd. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of other athletes, but those are all the top ones that we are affiliated with. That is that is very true. All of the athletes at the Uphill Downhill, thank you so much for coming out. We have to also, I don't know who else to thank. you have anyone else to thank? I think I gotta thank uh, I gotta thank everyone who shaved their beards, cut their beards, mm-hmm. and sacrificed it to the snow gods so we could have enough snow for. Yeah, it's always tricky on the uphill downhill. This especially, big, big early. especially for sausage uh, von sausage wiener to actually launch the skull rock like that. If oh, if, if there was if there was only like two inches less snow, it would have ended in disaster. It would have it would have been a terrible sight to see. So yeah, we gotta thank that. This has been. Uh, episode 11 of season three of just do it a dewey bruda podcast um everyone out there for the rest of you uh in skiing news it has been uh well there's no snow on the east coast so uh i hope that they hope it shows up at some point and in curling news the border is still closed down because of covid so you're gonna have to get the broom out and practice on the basement floor you're gonna have to sweep 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 down there to get it nice and sweeped up nice and tight and absolutely and with that i'm alex i am eric and for the love of god man be like von sausage wiener and just send it all right that was a pretty good podcast i'll take it done and dusted that was wild yeah i will say that just like that race do you think there's any way the macc will be able to finally catch up to us i don't think so i don't think it's possible no way they can't they yeah, can't find no us we're too slippery we're too slippery. We're slick, mm-hmm. fast, and speedy. Probably. Let's make up our own pasta company. <laughs> <laughs> we pick up a random Italian word. <laughs>